start off because uh, I want to I want to publicly acknowledge you know the two players that we have playing in the Super Bowl this weekend with uh, Trey Boston with the Panthers and Sylvester Williams uh, with the Broncos and you know it's a, a tremendous thing to see a young man's dreams and goals reached and you know both of those guys is, is like a lot of our players dream of playing at the highest level in the NFL but to also play in the in the greatest game there is which is is the Super Bowl and so Two of those guys have the, you know, have had the ability to achieve that, you know, that dream. And, and for Sly, it's been what two out of the last three years, you know. So the for, for where he came from and his story, it's it's pretty tremendous. So proud of both those guys, and uh, wish them all the luck in the world. So I'd also like to announce some changes on our staff, uh, just so everybody here knows that uh, Chris Kapelovic will be. He's named as our new offensive coordinator and offensive line coach. Uh, coach Heck, Keith Heckendorf, will be our quarterbacks coach and will be our passing game coordinator. And then you all know that we've added Chad Scott as our tight ends and hybrids coach. So, uh, you know, that's, that's where we are as a staff at this point. And uh, right now the staff is full and, and uh, moving ahead. We had a great day today. It was uh, an exciting day, you know, from – getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning and, and uh, setting my attitude and what kind of day it was going to be. But it was just a great day for, for me, my staff, uh, our support staff, all the people here at Carolina, our players, the recruits, their families, their high school communities, everybody. I mean, it was a, an exciting day all across this country, but especially for us as, uh, as this 2016 class comes to an end. You know, and this is something that this class was started in some cases more than 24 months ago, we were recruiting some of these kids. Some of them 24 months, some 18, some 16, some within 12. But most all of these guys were recruited for more than a year by us. And so we have uh, very close relationships with them and their parents. And it's been something that has been, uh, been a lot of fun to do. You know, it is, I am glad that it's over, very much so, as well as I'm sure they are all uh, glad that it's over. You know, there's so many people that are involved when you put a recruiting class together. It's not just me or not just the recruiting coach. There are so many people that when we bring them on our campus, from our support staff to uh, faculty to professors to uh, academic advisors to uh, the people that make this university beautiful on a daily basis, uh, there are just so many uh, people that I, I should say thanks for this class, I mean, including the people that provide private transportation for us and all the different things so that we can get what we need to get and do the things that we do. So. And I know I'm leaving a lot of people out. So, but I, the main thing is that you understand that it's not just me and our football staff that makes this class come together. It's a lot of people involved. And so it's a celebration for everybody today. Uh, you know, we introduced 19 young men today to uh, our Tar Heel community and they became a, a part of our Tar Heel family. So 19 with uh, the other seven that enrolled in school in January makes this class the size of 26, which is the first full class we've signed since we've been here. Uh, this class, you know, is, is balanced the way I look at it. Uh, not that we, because there's 10 on offense and 16 on defense, that that means balance to you guys, but it does to me in the fact that we met the uh, problems that we have and, and met the issues and brought in guys at every single position on the field. Uh, we leaned heavily towards linebackers and defensive backs. Uh, because of roster management and what we need to do for the future in that area. And so we're excited about this class. It should be a lot of fun. This group is uh, a group of guys that understand the value of an education. They, uh, they, they know if they're coming to the University of North Carolina, it's one of the reasons they chose to come to the University of North Carolina, because they can get a world-class education and play football at the highest level. So I'm going to stop there and just open it up for questions. Did you get a bump, do you think, from... 11 wins and ACC title game, was that something you saw on the recruiting trail? Yeah, I mean, winning helps uh, in every aspect of the program, but definitely in recruiting. And I think towards the end of the year, I think you saw, you know, you felt that bump, and I think you're going to feel that bump on into the 2017 class and the 18 class. I mean, because, you know, these, 
17 guys were, were juniors in high school and they're watching Carolina do something pretty special. And they are thinking, you know what, now we can see what Coach Fedora and the staff have been talking about and that, that is coming uh, you know, to fruition. So once they can see physical evidence of it, it makes it a little bit easier in recruiting. Larry, along those lines, I think 15 of these guys were committed before the season ever started. You mentioned some of these guys being recruited for 24 months. How far in advance um, can you get a, a benefit from a season? I mean, I'm assuming if the season ends in December, two months is a very short window to really capitalize on that. Yeah, it is. But when you're still trying to close some guys, obviously it's better to have a good season than a bad season. So, you know, there were some guys that we were still closing in those last couple of months. So that every every single one of those wins, every, uh, you know, every little bit of positive buzz that was going around around the state or or when you talked about uh, the week of the championship game and you turned on the TV, it was nothing but North Carolina, North Carolina, North Carolina. Well, that every recruit sees that. I mean, they're all looking at uh, the same thing we're all looking at on TV. And so that's always very positive and it helps us and it helps us for 17 class and the 18 class. When you say closing some guys, are you including some that had committed but were, t you know, taking some other visits so that what you guys did played a role in that too, maybe? No doubt about it. I mean, just just because they're committed doesn't mean they've signed, uh, as we all are aware of. I mean, that's uh, that just means they got a bullseye on their back for everybody else now. And so you you just got to you got to really continue to recruit those guys on a daily basis. So just when a kid commits to you doesn't mean it's over. It doesn't mean you stop recruiting him because you recruit him all the way up until today at seven o'clock a.m. when they when they sign the papers. What's the number of DBs? Is it six or seven? Seven. So, so is that a recent one that you just got here recently this afternoon? Yeah, I mean, he's. I would say like in the last half hour. I was just kind of curious. I'm trying to think of a name. We don't know for sure yet, but uh, we. Okay, we'll well, you know what I'm talking about. List them as we. Do, do you when you bring in that many team. DBs? Are you bringing some guys? What time in? is it? It's currently 3:38. <laughs> yeah, we're waiting on him to make his announcement. Okay. Okay. We're just so we're, we're trying not to steal his thunder. Yeah, okay. But we have his papers. Okay. <laughs> so it's uh, got you. Um, you look at any of these guys potentially that, that could move, maybe move up? Because some of them, so there's some length with some of those guys. Maybe move yeah, there's some length with all these guys. I mean, we really are. Uh, I, I don't know. We, we haven't made that. You know, we haven't projected any of them to move. You're talking about, like, move to a linebacker? Yeah. Or, uh, I don't see that right now. I mean, now, who knows two years from now what's going to, you know, what their bodies are going to do. Uh, I mean, I've had kids in the past that have grown out of safety and grown into linebacker. I've had linebackers growing to DNs, DNs growing to D tackles. So that just depends. I mean, so the thing about bringing development. in seven defensive backs is a lot. Well, because we're when you go back and look at our season and the percentage of nickel and dime that we were in all year compared to the actual four three. I mean, four three is probably a very small percentage. All right. So the offense we're faces we're, we're we're much more nickel and dime than we are four three. And so, greater need for DBs. So you, you talked about the, the target on the back of kids who commit early. You were actually in a position this year where you're, the season you had, you were actually in a better position maybe to recruit later in the process than you were earlier in the process. Does that change how you feel one way or the other about an early signing period? When well, no, not really because I'm, and we, that doesn't change the way we evaluate. I mean, we still, when we evaluate, we decide who we feel, you know, the best players out there that can help us win a championship whether that's early or late. And any time that we evaluate that guy and we make an offer to that guy, that, that guy has the opportunity to make a commitment to us. You mentioned Chad earlier. Obviously, he's an alumnus. What did you see from him as a, as a coach over the last few years that made you want to bring him? Yeah, I mean, one, I've had my eye on Chad for a while. I mean, the very first story I heard about Chad Scott, I think he was at Troy maybe, and he was recruiting down in South Florida. And this, I'd never met him. Uh, and this is, this is years ago I heard this, but he would – uh, because of the recruiting budget, he would pull into uh, hotel parking lots and he would sleep in his car, you know. And, uh, you know, so he was still getting it done. He found a way to make it happen. And so, I mean, you know, I've always heard and any time I've come up against this guy's a bulldog on the road recruiting. I mean, he's, you know, if you go on the road with him in his area, he's going to know every kid and every kid's going to know him. And he's got a great relationship with him. So, uh, you know, I've always heard that he's a great coach and has done a great job coaching. And then you put the, the stories that, that outweigh all of it are things you hear about him on the road recruiting. How much of a change was there with having Coach Chizik for a full year 
of a recruiting cycle to kind of looking for different guys, maybe defensively? Was there a big change in what you guys were doing and who the type of player you wanted to bring in? From when Gene first got here? Yeah, considering he got here before and he only had a month until signing. Yeah, so the, I mean, but all of that, you know, when Gene first got here, we started putting profiles together on our defensive players. So we have profiles written up on each and every player. So, you know, the line, uh, JP wrote up a profile on what he was looking for as a linebacker. You know, uh, uh, Charlton did the same thing for the safeties and corners. You know, and JP, when he does it, he, he talks about what he's looking for for a Mike, what he's looking for Sam, what he's looking for to Will. Same thing with Trey, what we're looking for for DTs, what we're looking for in a nose, what we're looking for in a power end. And a, in a, so every coach, we have those profiles, so every coach, when they go out in their areas, they know how to identify one of those kids. You know, so there's a profile. Now, there are some kids that don't fit the profile, but they're still great players. So that's where we have to project and make a decision on whether it, that kid's good, can help us win, you know. And usually, if, if they can do it on tape and they're doing it, you know, they can help us win. Whether they're tall enough that we were looking for, or say fast enough that we were looking for, you know. I mean, there's a lot of different factors. But uh, you know, it, all it was was establishing those profiles for the defense that we're going to run now and what we were looking for, and then from that point, just moving ahead. Has there been an uptick at all? You, he, when Gene came on staff, it was a lot of excitement among your players. And, and has that Still been, is. Did, yeah, did that translate? Oh, yeah, no yeah, doubt. I mean, all you, you have the, what we, the, uh, the biggest turnaround in, in college football and defense. You know, I mean, so Gene delivered all the promises that, that uh, everybody was making when he came. You know, and so uh, all the kids out there see that. They see the improvement, you know. They're like, okay, well, let's make the same improvement next year, you know, and just get better and better. So, yes, definitely. Overall, is there a big difference physically between the Chiswick recruit, so-called, and then maybe ones you guys are bringing into the years ago? Oh, yeah, because the, all the positions are different. So you're looking for something. I mean, you know, you're talking a matter of, you know, from a defensive tackle to a nose, I mean, just girth and, and width more than height, I mean, things like that. I mean, still, you still want them to be big, fast, and strong. I mean, all those things. But uh, just position, you know, since you don't have a hybrid anymore, we're not looking for that style of uh, bandit or a, uh, a ram, those kind of things. So more traditional, uh, you know, defensive ends. Now you're looking at a power end that's a bigger guy that's going to hold a point against the run, really be. And you're looking at a quick end that you want to be a guy that's going to come off the edge and all those things. So, you know, the, I mean, you'd love for those guys to be 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 300 pounds across the front and still be able to do the things that you want them to do. But that's not, that's not reality. As you, when you uh, think about walk-ons, filling in the gaps in recruiting, you know, with guys like Shotler and Matt Collins, would you say that's unusual to get that kind of high level of success production from those guys? You know, no, I wouldn't say that. I mean, because I, I think uh, in my eight years as a head coach and, and however many years it's been, 22 years as an assistant, I've seen it every year, everywhere I've been. I mean, there are guys out there that aren't recruited or for whatever reason aren't recruited and they want to come to that university and they go in and they pay their way and they prove that they're good enough to help the football team win. And they get better and better and they develop. Some of them mature later. There's all kind of reasons why a young man may not have been recruited very heavily out of high school. But then he goes in and he does unbelievable things from Schottmer to, to uh, Weiler to uh, Mac Hollins. I mean, and you can go on and on and talk about guys that we've had in the past that have done it. So I anticipate those same things happening in the future here also. Mayor, can you walk us through the, the search for the office coordinator? Um, it was, was Chris at the top all the, all the way along, or was it a situation where? Uh, well, yeah, you, you, first of all, you guys know I didn't move very fast, okay, because one, the offense isn't going to change. So it wasn't going to hurt us recruiting wise because we were going to continue with the same offense and do what we do, and we're pretty successful with it. So I wasn't worried about that. So there was, there was not a single recruit out there that said, what are you going to do with the offense? I mean, I think everybody knows this is what we do here at Carolina. So that was never a problem. It was more about we have tremendous chemistry on our staff, so it was making sure that we have the right guy that's going to fit what we do. And instead of bringing someone in like I did with Seth that had to learn what we did, you know, I just decided, you know what, Cat can run this room, Cat can put together a game plan and, and the way we do it, and so there's no reason to go anywhere else. Now let's let's bring in 
Chad because Chad fits who we are and the way we are, and he's going to bring add to that chemistry, and we should just pick up where we left off. What's your thoughts on, on play calling in terms of I mean, Cap? I guess has always been on the on the field, side line. and he's still going to be on the sideline. So, so the well, we haven't we haven't decided all that yet. I, I I can I will tell you I'm going to be more involved in the play calling than I have been, you know, since uh, since I've been here. Uh, but uh, you know, we just haven't gotten that far yet on how we're going to do all of it. You guys talked a lot about team chemistry being a big part of the success this year as compared with the year before. Do recruits notice that stuff when they come on campus for visits and things like that? I think they do. You know, I, I think they do because I hear that from parents also that you can tell that uh, our players love being here, they love being around each other, they care about each other, uh, they have a great relationship with the coaches, you know, and so I think, uh, I don't think you have to do anything for them to see that. I mean, I think it's something that's, that they see naturally, and it always does help, because if you're going to have a, a family-type atmosphere, uh, and you talk about having a family-type atmosphere, then they ought to be able to see that and feel it, and I think they do. You said you were excited about this upcoming class. Um, is there a particular thing that you are most excited about? That it's over. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, the NCAA yeah. stuff has been an issue for years for you guys are improving in terms of being hammered that way over schools and having to deal with all these questions. Is that less of an issue this year as time goes on? For Definitely. You? I mean, you know, that, that I really believe that cloud that's been hanging over our head for the previous four years is dissipated. Is that, is that the right word? Is that, what, is that a, something that you use in uh, meteorology or something? I don't know. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's not there. It's not like it was. And, and even though I think it's people still try to use that out there, I just think people are tired of hearing about it. And they know that uh, you know, there's been a lot of crying wolf about what's going to happen. And none of those things have happened, and so I think our, our, you know, they feel pretty comfortable with what we're saying, and uh, they know that we're moving forward, and so we really hadn't looked back on it. Since you brought in 19, could you have gone to 21 or 22 under the right circumstances? Uh, that that would have, uh, yeah, we could we could probably have done that. We would have had to uh, adjust some things, but we we probably could have, but I, you know, just not the way it felt. Where can you compare the two quarterback signings and Burns a little bit? Yeah. First of all, you know, uh, Logan, who's already here on campus, he's about 6'3", he's 230 pounds. We'll probably trim him down some, uh, you know, and, and get him in, uh, in good shape. He's a, uh, a really a strong arm guy. You know, if you look out there, people are they're going to say he's a pro-style quarterback, but that's really not what he is. I mean, he, he rushed for right at 1,000 yards this year as a, as a quarterback. I think he's rushed for right at – a thousand the last two years. He can run a lot better than what people think he can run. He's, he's actually pretty fast because he was in camp. And so he can do both. I mean, I feel very comfortable. He's uh, very intelligent. He's got a, a presence about him, as, as you like all your quarterbacks do. And uh, I'm excited about seeing where he's at, you know, this spring. So it's good that he's in here. Uh, Chaz Surratt, uh, the kid that we uh, signed from in the state who was the Gatorade Player of the Year in, in North Carolina, and also the Offensive Player of the Year in the state of uh, North Carolina is a kid that we're also excited about. We've, we've said from the beginning that we've got to keep the great players in the state at home for us to have great success. So we're, we're thrilled about having him. He's a guy, I think, uh, as a starter, he's won 30 games over there and won state championship last year. I mean, he's, he's done tremendous things, and he is another guy that can run and throw. We're probably not going to recruit class. Well, I, I'm not going to say probably. We're not going to recruit guys that can only do one or the other. You know, we're always going to search out the dual threat guys that, because I believe it's much more difficult to defend somebody that can beat you either way. And both of these guys can do that. Chad said he was going to originally enroll in January, and then I guess as it became clear he had a chance to play basketball and didn't want to rush out. Were you concerned well, here, about here, him? Originally, him? originally, he was coming in June like everybody else. Then he had the elbow injury that ended his football career. Okay, and I can't remember what round it was. Third round, was it? Okay, third round he had the elbow injury that he goes down. After that elbow injury, they make a decision, well, if he's going to have this injury and he's not going to be able to play basketball, he might as well go ahead and get on campus. So we're going to come at mid-semester. So we start preparing for that. Then he gets word that, you know what, the rehab's going well. Maybe he might be able to make it back for the playoffs of basketball, you know, 
Uh, and so then they made the decision, well, if that can happen, his younger brother's on the team and they could win another state championship, we'd like them to play together the last time. And so we were, you know, we were okay either way. I mean, it, was, it, was, uh, it wasn't really a concern because the parents were always communicating with us on what was actually going on. So I don't know what anybody else was saying, but we were, we were fine with it. How quickly did the J.B. Copeland situation materialize? And because of his experience, is he a guy that you expect to be on the field in the fall? We hope so. I mean, the, the way it materializes is, is knowing that uh, Jeff Schottmer and Shaq were leaving and uh, we lost uh, uh, Jackson, yeah, Joe Jackson, Joe Jackson, you know, at the beginning of the year to a uh, career-ending injury. You know, all of a sudden it, it became a priority that we probably, you know, we kept looking at the younger guys that we were recruiting and wondering, are we going to be okay, or do we need to bring some type of age into that into that room? And uh, we just, after searching the junior college, we we uh, found JB and felt like he was a good fit for us, and uh, that we thought he could be successful. And so we said, yeah, let's let's go after him, and that's why we chose to bring him in. Going back to Jazz, um, I know he showed some interest in walking onto the basketball team. Are two sport athletes like that ever concerned you that they'll have that focus in? No, not really. I, I mean, if you ask me what I'd rather have a one-sport athlete or a two-sport two sport athlete, I'll take the two-sport athlete every time. You know, you guys, I mean, you don't see this, and, and well, I don't get to see much of it either, but in the summer we do, we do these, you know, the team does these games on Wednesday from beach volleyball to home run hitting contests on the softball field to three-point shooting contests to uh, uh, ultimate frisbee to paintball to you name it. Nothing that has anything to do with football. And what is amazing is to see some of them and how bad they are at these other things. And it really makes me wonder. I mean, like, what, you know, you're an athlete. You're, a, you know, you are a highly trained college athlete, and you strike out on three pitches on a slow pitch softball. I mean, I've never hit a softball. I mean, just make, you know, that's a shame. Because the only real time in your life that you ever get to do any of those things is when you're young. You know, I mean, it's not like you're going to go, uh, go play beach volleyball the rest of your life or something. And so I think, I think young kids, especially high school and below, they need to do everything they can possibly do. If you're an athlete, you're an athlete. You ought to be able to do multiple things. You know, when you go bowling, you ought to be able to not throw a gutter ball one out of every three times. I mean, you ought to be able to do it if you're an athlete. And so I think it's important. I think, yeah, I'll take multi-sport athletes all the time. I think they're better athletes. Is there any, is there any benefit to that? With, I know there's some physiological stuff of like, you know, wearing down on tenants that you just do one thing. Is there any, do you buy into any of that or? Uh, you know, I, I mean, I think, you know, where you, you're talking like pitchers and, and quarterbacks sure. and things like that are using the same thing over and over and over. I mean, I, I go way back and have had a lot of success with quarterbacks from the very beginning. And, and I was one of those guys, I, I didn't believe that, you know, if you threw this many times, you need to rest your arm this many, you know, I, baseball. I,